Let's talk about Ta Wars, an upcoming game about shooting dice. Welcome to Brains on Games. I'm Dr. Brian McDonald. In this episode, we're going to talk about an upcoming game that's going to be on Kickstarter soon. I'll put some information about the campaign in the show notes below this video. This is a game that was sent to me by the folks over at Bored to Death. It's a game called Ta Wars. Now, this is a prototype, so the box and the components might change, but uh, Ta Wars is a game for between two and six players. You can play with kids age 13 and up. Honestly, younger kids can figure this one out. Uh, and games take about 30 minutes to an hour and a half to play. Let's take a deeper look at Ta Wars by Bored to Death. Ta Wars is a light dexterity game that has some resource management built into it. Each player is going to have a player board like this to keep track of their stats and their dice and their resources and their points. What you're trying to do in this game is be the first player to earn five crowns. So once you get this cube up to five crowns, that's going to be the end of the game. Now, how do you earn those points? Well, you're going to do that by shooting dice out of these towers. Each player is going to have a tower that matches the picture on their player board. Here's the yellow player's tower. It looks a little bit more like a city. And I'll show you what their player board looks like. And you've got a little story about each faction in the game. Now, why is this called Ta Wars? It's the, the world is called Ta in this game, according to the rule book. But really, I think it's because it sounds like, if you say it fast, it sounds like you're saying towers and you're shooting dice out of these dice towers. So you're going to be shooting dice out of those towers that I showed you. And, and you can earn crowns by attacking other players. We'll, we'll go a little bit through the rules to explain that. Uh, you're also, I mean, most of the time you're going to be earning crowds, I think, through completing these quests. So you've got a great big stack. Let me see if I can pull the whole stack out. You've got this great big stack of these quests that you can do. Now, sometimes they're quests that are just going to earn you some resources. You trade a, a bunch of resources for something else. Often, though, what you're going to be doing uh, is trying to complete quests to earn those crowns. So a lot of the time... For example, in this one, if you're in a forest and you can get your attack up to 10 or above, you're going to earn a crown for completing that quest. And you start the game by drafting or discarding a quest from a row that's going to be beside your map. Remember, like I said, this is a prototype, so things are going to change. The map in particular, I know, is going to change. I think it's going to be more like a board rather than this rollout map that I have here. Uh, but you can only hold two quests in a t at a time, and it can take some time to get your tower in position, your dice in position, or, the, or to earn the resources that you need to complete these quests. So uh, a lot of the time in these games, you're kind of making a choice between do I want to mess up my opponents or do I want to, to ad advance my own goals? But in Tav Wars, because you can only hold two quests, and it's going to take you probably, you know, a couple of turns or three turns to complete one of those quests, very often your quests are going to be full and it forces you to, to discard one of those other ones. So you'll kind of be looking for the easiest quest to complete so that the other players can't get that one and win the game. Once all of the players have chosen their quest or discarded a quest from the quest row, well, then you're going to look at the dice that you have on the board. Of course, on the first turn, you're not going to have any dice, but eventually you're going to have dice that are, are laying out on the board and you can gather resources using those. So for example, if I shot this six-sided die into the forest and rolled a two, that means that I can get two wood. So I would move my wood counter up on my player board by two. You could, instead of using these dice that are on the board to gather, uh, you could just leave them on the board for the next turn and increase the number on them by one. So instead of two, maybe I, I want to wait a turn, I can collect three. That can be a little bit risky though, because other players could knock your dice into a different area of the board and then you'll be stuck you know now I'm going to get stone instead or they might knock your your die completely off the map they might change the number on the die so now I'm only getting one instead of three so there are there are some risks to to leaving those dice on the board we didn't find now I've only played this game at a two-player count we didn't find that we were shooting very often at the dice on the board we were really firing at one another's towers once you've gathered their, your dice or, or increased their value, well, then you start to get to trade or spend some resources. You might spend resources to recruit dice. For example, if I want to move a die from the bottom of my player board into my, 
area that I can roll from, I'm going to have to spend two uh, of these little fish in order to get that six-sided die. I need to spend two wood to get an eight-sided die. If I happen to have three stone, I can get a ten-sided die. Uh, I need three gems in order to get the twelve-sided one. I need one of every single resource in order to get this twenty-sided die. Now the twenty-sided die is the only one that can never be used to gather. It can only be used to attack the other players. Now let's say I've recruited a couple of dice. You always have access to the four-sided die. It's always going to be up here in your little population. They call it the population area. These are the soldiers that you've recruited to gather resources and, and to attack the other towers. Then you get to move your tower or rotate it. You cannot do both. So I can, they have little measuring sticks in, in the box here of the game. So I can move my tower a certain distance without changing its orientation or instead of moving, I can turn it probably towards another tower, but maybe towards an area of the board where I'm trying to gather resources from. So if I needed fish, I might be turning my tower this way, but I can't move it if I'm rotating. So it's either rotate or move, which I think is kind of clever, and it does slow things down a little bit uh, in terms of getting your dice where you want them to go. And so I've got these three dice. You always have access to the four-sided one, but say I, I've managed to recruit two other ones, then I decide as I shoot each one. So so you're doing this phase in player order. I'm going to fire off all of my dice, and then the next player fires off all of theirs, and so on and so on. You have to declare before dropping your die into the tower whether it's going to be used to attack or gather. So if I say, well, I'm going to gather resources with this eight-sided die, and it happens to hit my opponent's tower, that's not going to do anything to my opponent. And I didn't hit, but... It's sort of, I'm, it looks like I'm in the forest, maybe on the border of the city here. So I can gather six wood potentially on my next turn. If it does touch the border of another zone, I can choose to gather from that zone instead. But with the city, you get one of any resource, no matter what the number is on the die. Now, I could declare that I'm going to attack. So I've moved things around a little bit, but I could declare that I want to attack using this six-sided die. So if I shoot that die and it hits the other tower, which that one did not, so I've shot that eight-sided die and it hit the tower. So if I had declared that as an attack die, well, now what's going to happen? This tower is going to lose one heart, but their defense is going to go up by one. I gain one crown, and my attack is going to go up by one. So my attacks get stronger, but I can't, if I keep picking on one player, their defense is getting stronger and stronger too. So it does become harder and harder to, to really target just one single player. You do kind of want, it's a clever rule in, that forces you to spread, well, it doesn't force you, but it encourages you to spread those attacks around. If your opponent gets down to zero health, one of two things could happen. And you decide at the beginning of the game, we really only played this one way because I, I don't like player elimination because then you've got one player sitting on the sidelines waiting for everyone else to be finished. So you decide before you start playing, are players going to be eliminated when they get to zero health or do you just force them to lose a crown and then they can continue playing. And, and we kind of like that idea of, well, you get a penalty and it's a pretty serious penalty because you do need five crowns to win, but you're not going to get knocked out of the game just by getting hit five times. Some quests do allow you to increase your health so you can heal. You don't, most of the time you don't get to keep those dice that you buy. You hang on to the four-sided one, but if you're gathering or if you attack using a die, it's going to go back down onto your board and you're going to have to recruit that die again next time if you want to use it on every single turn. Now, what skills are you working on when you play a game like Tau Wars? Well, of course, this is a dexterity game. You are using those visual motor skills and visual motor coordination is important here because you're trying to kind of aim those dice uh, as much as you can. There is that visual component and you're imagining, well, how are they going to come out of my die out of my dice tower when I drop them through and then you're trying to throw that die with enough force and maybe to, to hit on the edge a little bit so it curves out the way that you want it to uh, in order to hit your opponent or get that die in the area of the map where you want to gather from Th there there's a little bit it is primarily a dexterity game let's be honest you're really shooting dice out of towers which is kind of a fun thing to do I've never I've never tried to hit a particular target using a die uh, but 
there's also a little bit of resource management there too, right? You're gathering the, the resources in order to complete quests, to buy dice and maybe to buy crowns. Uh, and you, you do have to save those up from one turn to the next in order to complete those quests. So there's a little bit of involvement here of the executive functioning skills, those behaviors that you need to work towards a goal. Anytime you're planning or budgeting, that's what we're talking about. But these are very light demands on the executive functions. It's not very complicated planning. You're not juggling tons and tons of information uh, and and doing calculations. You know, you're just you're sort of managing your resources a little bit, but primarily you're you're using those dexterity skills. And boy, when the board is crowded with multiple towers, uh, it does make things interesting. Final thoughts about. Towers. Well, this is a very silly dexterity game. I've never played a game where you're shooting dice at, at towers or shooting dice into certain areas of the board, and it is fun to drop the dice through these little towers. And, and I like that, although it is kind of a battling game where you can attack the other players, by attacking an opponent... Um, you know, what you have to do to success, I don't think I mentioned this, but what you have to do to, to successfully attack an opponent is that your attack stat on your player board and the number that's, that hits the, the number that's rolled on the die that hits that tower have to exceed that player's defense. So if I attack another tower and their defense stat keeps going up and up, well, it, it encourages you to spread your attacks around. So it's not going to be everybody ganging up on one player in order to earn those crowns. Uh, which I think is really smart. I like that you kind of delay things by not being able to rotate your tower and move on the same turn. So you can be a bit strategic in trying to kind of get behind someone who you know has to move into a certain zone to finish their, their quest that they're working on. So uh, there are some clever little twists, uh, I think, in this game, but it is an extremely silly game. Uh, I do like that you can choose not to eliminate players. I don't like games where players get eliminated so it, it is much more fun to have everybody still in the game uh, so I, I'm glad that they're they're flexible in that rule the quests aren't difficult but but the hard part is kind of getting your tower into the right zone and getting your dice into the right zone and making sure you have the right resources so it slows things down and that does force the 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 players to discard some of those quests rather than taking new ones uh, and I like that you know it's it sort of takes away some of the tension of do I want to advance my own quests or am I going to mess with the other players well you're much more likely to try and mess with the other players when you've got two quests that you're working on you can't discard them once you've taken them so uh, you're only discarding from that row that the other players can choose from so that is kind of a fun uh, mechanism too now are, are there downsides to towers well my main downside is this it's going to be much more fun when you have lots of towers on the board so you want to have all of those players with with multiple towers that you can shoot at or towers that get in the way so that you're blocked from going to the area that you want to go to so you can't get your dice in between those two other towers in order to get the gems that you want on we found it was gems mostly that, that we were having a hard time getting our hands on in the games that we played but you know what? What a, a silly, fun uh, activity to involve yourself in. Shooting dice out of towers and, and trying to hit uh, your opponents. So thanks so much to the folks at Board to Death for sending Tav Wars my way. Like I said at the start, I will put information about the campaign in the show notes below the video. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave them in the comment section of this video or you can email me at brian at brainsongames.ca. Brainsongames.ca is the website. That's where future episodes will go. Previous ones are already up there. Brains on Games is the X handle and the Instagram feed and the Facebook page. So we're all over the place. And if you enjoyed this video and you want to be notified of future ones, you can head on over to YouTube and click that subscribe button. Thanks for joining me and hopefully I'll see you next time.